Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast brought to you today by Manscaped. I love the Manscaped scripts. Now, check this one out. I've got to read it, right? I always like this little the lawnmower, right? DT, it's time for some spring cleaning. Flowers are blooming. The grass is growing. And it's time to mow your lawn. Thanks to our sponsors, Manscaped, you can trim your hedges below the belt safely and efficiently using the lawnmower free zero right <laughs> that has skin safe technology which reduces painful snags and nicks making the spring cleaning a lot more smoother experience unfortunately it still won't be as smooth as florentino perez thinking he could hijack the european football by himself and get away with it the lawnmower free zero also lasts for 90 minutes on a single charge which is about as long as the English clubs lasted in the Super League before pulling out. <laughs> wow. Then, hold on, oh, wait, you got, oh. the, you got the, the ball deodorizer, right? And the, uh, the crop <laughs> preserver. Where's the crop preserver? That's, yeah, this is the crop preserver. I think you'll also find um, that we're getting to the time of year where you need the Manscaped crop preserver. An anti-chafing, ball deodorant and moisturizer this will help your family jewels feel cool and comfortable throughout the day, really helping you to avoid sticky situations. Maybe the Cronkies should have thought about using this at the start of the week. <laughs> Love this from Manscaped. Don't forget, oh. uh, if you use the code AFTV, you can get 20% off as well. The link is in the description. But big up Manscaped, man. Big up Manscaped. What a week, DT. What a What week. a crazy week. When You know what? On Sunday... I started interviewing Turkish and he started talking about it. He goes, oh, I just heard the news that, you know, they're t Arsenal looking to break away in a new Super League at Kroenke's one of the architects. And I was like, oh, okay. Didn't really, yeah. even at that time, I didn't think much of it because no, I, I know that Turkish is always going in yeah, yeah, under yeah. Kroenke's, right? And then as the day went on and the news started to get out there, I was like, what? And then obviously the news broke. Remember how they did it just before midnight, really? Mm. About 11-ish, I think it was. Hoping that everyone was in bed. Yeah. They broke the news, simultaneous announcements yeah. on you know all the various breakaway clubs' websites. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, it all came to a head on Monday, Tuesday. It was absolute chaos. Madness. And fans up in up in arms you know what i mean universally yeah you know especially the fans of those big six clubs mm. you know the arsenal fans the liverpool fans tottenham you know all of them all the man united mm. they all were losing it absolutely lose it and you know at one stage i was thinking to myself you know what even though we're protesting and i remember speaking to tim payton of the um arsenal supporters trust and i said to tim i go tim what do you reckon we need to do to to really keep this thing going, to really to, to really make change? Because we're up against these billionaires, 12 billionaires, we're up against them. They've got this thing financed, they've got this thing worked out. How do you think the, us as fans can stop it? And he said, Robbie, we've all got to just keep making up noise, every single fan. Yep. And I said to him, you know what? On AFTV, we're gonna try our best to make as much noise as possible. But at that time, even when I went away from that, I'm thinking to myself, boy, even with all of the various fan groups, fan channels, websites, everybody in the football community, all the fans around the world, even with us making up all the noise, they'll probably do their usual and just ignore us. Mm. But something great happened with this one in that the fans got heard. The fans got heard. The politicians started to get involved because that was the other thing I was thinking to myself. The only way we're going to stop this is if politicians get involved and the players. Yeah. The politicians started to get involved. Boris Johnson came out very, very strongly against it. Said that he'd be even up for changing laws to make sure it didn't happen. Then you started to see the cracks with the players. Mm. You know, first of all, Jurgen Klopp came out when he when he was interviewed um, after the game, Liverpool game the other night, said that he didn't even know about it, right? And, you know, then you had uh, Milner, Mm -hmm. um, talking out against it. You had Jordan Henderson calling a meeting of all the captains and it just, 
you then started to see it fall apart. Yeah. Fans were protesting outside Chelsea's ground. Chelsea started to make noises that they were going to pull out. And then all of a sudden, it was a domino effect. Man City first to come out and say, right, officially they're pulling out. Followed up. I think Arsenal was the next one. They, they, they've, and now all of the clubs in England have pulled out of this European Super League. Mm -hmm. There's been groveling apologies from John Henry from Liverpool. He put a, because at first they didn't even apologise for trying to pull off this thing, but he mm -hmm. did a groveling apology where he's apologised to all the Liverpool fans. The Arsenal on their website, they've apologised. But serious damage has been done. And I, I, I don't know. Let's irreparable. <laughs> irreparable for you? Yep. What have um, you made of the last well, few days? In terms of the owners, um, and in particular Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool, the three biggest clubs in England, historically, in terms of trophies won, in terms of the tradition, the history and everything. Um, I think it's time that each of us get our clubs back. I don't think that any words, any apology can mask over what they've done and what they've tried to do to our clubs. Um, we're clubs with fans that have years of history and tradition and so much embedded into the clubs. Mm. There are lives to so many. And, you know, I was speaking and said, Arsenal's been in my family since my great granddad from the 1890s when we were Royal Arsenal and we'd just become a league club, like an actual proper like mm. club. We were playing in the the London Cup mm. and things like that before then and when we mm. just got found and like this is what it's like for fans of these clubs all over and I don't think that you can repair the damage this shows the level that these owners can actually go to and how little they care about us well they treated the fans with utter contempt like because they always have done like they've always done but this always. one this one was like the worst because they plotted this move. There was no consultation with the fans, the players, none, or even the managers, Let's the people remember. that is going to affect the most. Those, because I always say, yeah. there's no football without the players. Without there's the no fans. football without the fans. Yeah. The, you take away one of those two ingredients, right? There's no football, yeah. right? And they plotted this mm -hmm. without no consultation. Nothing. Let's also remember, Robbie, that during the midst of a pandemic, and Arsenal in particular are making 55 employees redundant. Even Gunasaurus got laid off and we know how, <laughs> how embarrassing that was and the whole circus around it. But whilst in the midst of doing all of that, they were plotting a deal where they would be generating 350 million pounds per year for themselves. They sold out Mesut Ozil and portrayed him as being greedy and not wanting to take a pay cut. Now you yeah, know why he didn't. Right? And not what, uh, and he said at the time, there's reasons, why, and now you see, and all that, like you said, all that time, because this is not something that was plotted over a week or so. This has been something that they've been plotting for months uh, and true. months and months. Mate, I think cronky has been planning this for a very long time. Well, I think, I think it's been a long-term goal of all of them, mm. especially the American owners, ever since they took over this club. Let's, let's be real, with, if you look at what they were trying to do, this European Super League, let's just explain what they were what they were going to do here. They Greed. were going to have 20 teams in this. They'd be t it'd be divided into two sections, mm. 10 on one section, 10 on the other section, right? And then they would play games midweek. I think they were saying Wednesday nights. Yeah. They'd play games and that would literally last the whole season. Yeah. So you can imagine the sort of teams that they'd be putting out on the weekends in the league. You yeah. know what I mean? The Premier League would have become the Carabao Cup. Yeah. The Carabao League, because basically the teams would have been so weak from those teams because they, they, they wouldn't need to care whether they win it or not because yeah. they're already in the big European they're competition. Guaranteed. But if you dig deep into what they were trying to do, right, it was backed by loads and loads of money. Mm -hmm. You know, the money was there. They got the financing for it. You can't do those things overnight. That takes a, that's probably a year even longer or longer that. to negotiate even that with those that. big banks, yeah? Then it would have guaranteed, right? Because you're going to have those, you, what, if it's 10 teams on one section, you've got to play nine games, 18 games, isn't it? 
Because you've yeah, got to play, two, games. So you got played, to play nine yeah, yeah, yeah. games. You've got to play nine games twice. Then you've got playoffs after that. Then the final. Mm. So it guarantees lots of TV coverage, lots of money. You think about, because first of all, they want to qualify. They want to ensure that every year they qualify for this. So that's why basically even clubs like Tottenham, who, you know, they haven't won nothing since what, a major trophy since the 60s. Yeah, last they, trophy was a Carabao Cup. Yeah, they, called, they would have been guaranteed, right, entry into this competition, right? Mm -hmm. S same with Arsenal. We haven't been in the Champions League for years now, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, they would have been guaranteed entry. But you know what? It's almost when I started to look on it, that's not even enough. Because you look on it, Manchester United got into the Champions League this season and got knocked out in the group stages. So mm. in effect, Manchester United only played six games in the Champions League mm. because they would have played against, the, the, there's four teams in the group stage yeah, that yeah. have played against three, three of them twice. Away. Yeah, yeah. But in this new league, Manchester United, regardless, and Arsenal, all of them, regardless, would have been guaranteed 18 games. 18. Yeah. With all the TV coverage and sponsorship and everything that comes with it. Yeah. All it was was a play to make loads and loads and loads of money. Yeah. And right? did, and pull pull away from the the history and the values of each club. And this is the thing and everybody is responsible. And I'm not just talking about this whole organization to go to this European Super League. We're talking <coughs> FIFA to UEFA to the FA to all the broadcasters from Sky to BT to BBC, all of them. They are all part of the mess that we are in right now. And I hope that this has woke everybody up, the fans up in particular, to say that we've got a voice for all of this. And you start from the very top and you go to FIFA. This is the same organisation that sold a World Cup to Qatar in 2022. We already know how they got that World Cup. Let's not be stupid. There's a reason why Set Blatter, Set Blatter is banned from football. If you go to UEFA, this is an organisation that changed the Champions League from a competition that was only originally for champions to, you know what, you can finish fourth and you still get into it. But we call it the Champions League, even though you're not a champion. Um, you can finish third in your group and still drop down into another European competition. Mm. Yeah. So they've done all of that. Then you go and have a look at the issues that they've not dealt with, shall we say, involving racism. You know what? I'm going to ban a player because he's wearing a sponsor on his pants or because of betting irregularity. Yeah, the betting side of things can't do it. It's wrong. But to justify that that's worth more of a ban than being racist to someone like the incident with Glenn Kamara. Why are you not taking action? Why are you not actually stamping out? How many times have we seen teams go to certain European destinations in particular that have got a history England when, of, they, went, England when they went to Bulgaria well, and, and, and they were racially abused you know on the pitch it was clear to yeah. hear everybody could hear but it but it's constant and it took them constant. ages it took them ages to take any action oh we got to investigate it I don't know why it takes so long when everybody can hear what's going on and then they gave out something like what was it a 40 odd grand fine and you're warned it's about pathetic. it pathetic but then when it comes to this when it came to this, they answered immediately. Right, like statements, you won't you be able to play in the World Cup. You're banned from this. You're banned from that. Amazing, statements. Amazing, but then amazing. Show, but then it, show, then it showed. Then it showed they can money. do it. money when your money's been exactly. affected. Exactly, their money doesn't get affected by racism. That's exactly. why they don't step in. Well, they don't care. Yeah, exactly. About they don't care enough. Yeah. And the fact is, if you can ban a player from a World Cup and a Euro and everything else based on something that they are not actually a part of. The fans, yeah. the players are not actually responsible yeah, the players for this. didn't even want this. You're yeah. punishing it. And in, inadvertently, you're actually playing into the owner's hands because I can guarantee if you spoke to the owners and said, your players can't play international football, they'll go, yeah, that's all right. Because it don't benefit us then playing international football. We don't get paid for it. Our valuable assets go over there, play these games, risk injury. <laughs> cool with us. We keep them. Cool, cool mm. lovely. So if you can do all of that, then as an organization, you can ban certain teams from European competitions like you did with England all them years ago. You mm. punished everybody in England because of an incident that had nothing to do with everybody. So why can't you do that now? Why can't you turn around to certain organizations and certain clubs and whatever and be like, you know what? This is the second time or the third time that you've been involved in a racist incident. You know what? You're banned. 
You're not allowed in the Champions it's League or the well. Europa League or whatever. I've been saying this for um, years because they, we, because they don't care. No, they don't care because it doesn't affect them in their pocket. Mm. And then you go to the broadcasters and everybody else, right? I know it wasn't of this size, but Sky and everything, they were part of all of this monopoly in the beginning in 92 when they converted the old first division into the Premier League. And they took football from free terrestrial TV to subscription. It wasn't of this size, but they were a part of that. Now model. all of a sudden, their gravy train has been halted and they're like, whoa, hold on a minute. What's going on here? But let's go and look at them as an organisation. Do they care about the fans? They're all coming out and talking. Mm. I've seen Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher and that come out and talk about the fans and everything else. Cool. Have the same energy when your company that you work for do little to care about the fans when it comes to a match day. When they decide at the last minute, you know what, that game's going to be moved to a Monday night. Let's send Arsenal fans 200 odd miles up the road to Manchester or wherever it might be. I remember playing in Middlesbrough on a Monday night before, mm. right? We go to this Friday, we got Everton. If fans were allowed in the stadium, you'd expect all the Evertonians to travel down from Merseyside on a Friday night to London. How many years has this been happening? How long have they took the piss out of fans? They don't care. And it's not just the local fans, it's the foreign fans. How many fans book in advance flights over here from all parts of the world, hotels, and then mm. at the last minute, you know what? I'm going to have it as Monday night football. They don't care. Let's also talk about the government getting involved. Hold because... on, wait a minute. Before you even go off of Sky, you forgot one thing. Oh, what's that? You forgot one thing about um, the Skies and BTs, right? During a pandemic... Oh they no, were I was get to that. They were yeah, looking yeah, at the charge fee 40 99 Mate, to watch games. I haven't even got listen, not just 40 <laughs> 99 to watch a game, but watch Sheffield United v Burnley. Yeah. Seriously, you need to pay me 40 99 to watch that. <laughs> so we I'm saying the government have got involved in this. They also need to get involved with certain companies in terms of travel. <clears> because we've seen it at first hand, for example, with European games. The moment we're drawn away to Barcelona or something. A £50 flight to Spain is now £350. Because, oh, look, Arsenal are there on that day. Let's bump it up. You go to train companies. All right, the moment you... Arsenal are playing Liverpool, for example, on a Sunday. Trains now to Liverpool are treble the price they would normally be. They're all doing it. Mm. But who's actually legislating it and saying, listen, you can't do that. That's, that's wrong. So it's like a collective organisation where nobody, nobody cares about the fans. From the companies to, to Sky, to BT, to BBC, they're all a part of it. They're all the same. They're all part of this organisation. Mm. You know, and the Premier League, they're the same. They're all the same. How many of them genuinely care about the fans? That's all I've seen over the last few days is the fans, the fans, the fans. Have that same energy now. Have the same energy and do the same things and argue the same points with all of the fans that have been crying out to you. You think this could be a turning some, point? It could be. And what I want from the fans, and this is not just Arsenal fans, this is fans in general as a collective, is there's no rivalry here. This ain't about Arsenal, Tottenham, United or whoever it might be. This is about fans. Whatever club you support, join forces and get all of this poison out of our game. Take our game back. But the game that was started by the poor, that's been robbed by the rich. Let's remember that. And they're destroying it. And it's no coincidence that bar Tottenham, the people involved in all these clubs are American. No, Tottenham's American owners as well. He's, he was born in England. Their, their guy's American. The guy that runs Enoch was born in England. The guy, the, the guy, the, the main, I've forgotten his name now. I forgot the, his the, name, the, but he was the, born the in main, England. The main guy is American. He was born in England. Well, I don't know he's born, but he's American. He's I, well, he might be an American, American He might be an American now, but I'm saying yeah. he was born in England. It's the same now, principle. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to create that American system where basically, like the NFL, like the NBA, basically in those, in those places, they have, I don't know, I don't know how many teams they have. Let's say you've got 20 teams in that and there's no promotion, no relegation. Yeah, exactly. Every year they get mega, mega TV deals. Exactly. And they slice it up between them. I told them, you, I said right? it. Right, and yeah. they, I think, I think what's happened is they've come over here and they've bought these clubs and their long-term vision is we're going to do the same over here. Yeah. And they, they just can't get their head around. I mean, you look at this season, at the moment in the top four, 
there's only two of that big six in it, yeah. which is Man City and Man United, right? Mm -hmm. So you can just imagine like the Liverpool guys, our guys, Cronky, you know, um, the guy at Tottenham, the, 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 they're thinking, how can this be? You don't, that's not how sports run like in America. We we got the biggest clubs around, man. We, we, we got the biggest stadiums. We got the biggest fan bases. We're supposed to be in next year, the Champions League. We're supposed to be in the biggest competition. We're the ones who are supposed to be have to access to, is... to all that money. No, yeah. no, that's <laughs> not how it runs in nah. English football. In English football, it's always been based on competition. competition. If you're good enough, you get into that exactly. thing. If you're not good enough, you're not in it. Yeah. Right. And so I feel that that's and, and at the end of the day, listen, this is having nothing. American sport is American sport. And I, if I was a billionaire owner and I went and bought an NBA team, I wouldn't be looking to go over to America and try and change it to the English system. Because you know what? That's the system that works for them. Yeah. That's their system. That's the way they've always done it. I mean, remember, Stan Kroenke moved the St. Louis Rams, uprooted it from there and moved it to a completely different city in LA. Yeah. Right? But they do that over there. Yeah. Right, um, I remember the last time I was in Vegas, I was, uh, we were driving to the hotel and I see this mega stadium being built. And I said to the guy, I said, wow, that's a, that stadium looks nice. What stadium's that? He said, that's the new um, LA, that's the new um, Las Vegas Raiders stadium. I said, Las Vegas Raiders? I thought it was the Oakland Raiders. He said, nah, they're moving here to Las Vegas. They started off in LA. It was the LA Raiders. Then it was the Oakland Raiders. Now it's the Las Vegas Raiders. But that's how they do it. Exactly. That's how they it's a do business. it. Yeah, it's and a their business. fans over there accept that, and that's cool. Yeah, but we don't no accept problem. It. But over we here, that is not how the tradition no. and that is not how our system runs. And they've tried to come, I think, and they've tried to they looking at it, just looking at the bottom line. It's so obvious now. They're just looking at the money they can make. They don't care about the fans. This is it, Rob. They, they don't care about care. fans. They, they only care. care about the amount themselves. of money they can make. Yeah, they care about right? themselves. And that's why they wanted this competition because in this competition now, money, they're going to be playing money. so many games. They're going to have, you know, I think each of them would have been guaranteed something like 350 million pounds each. And for that, I mean, how are these owners... Because you know what, I, I feel a bit sorry as well for like well, some of the uh, some of the employees of these owners well, at these clubs because well. they didn't know nothing about it either. No, listen, Robbie. Oh, it, oh no, wait a minute, they gone. didn't know nothing no, about it. No, they didn't. I right? know, so no what I'm knew. saying is, how do they now go into a meeting and look the guys from Leicester in the eye and shake their hand and say, yeah, I do it. The man is gonna be looking and saying, They ain't gonna walk into those meetings anyway. You are rats. Yeah, they are. No, no, but I'm not even, I, I'm, I'm saying that th th these guys have discredited, it's crunky, he don't care because he's still going to be in his ranch. He don't come here anyway, right? Yeah. So even though, he, <laughs> even though it's been a damaging loss for him financially, he's not got to face up to it, has he? No. Right? He he's not had to face the up. Line. They put a statement out on the website. He didn't put his name to it. It's just a statement from Arsenal, yeah. right? So all those guys who are at Highbury House, they're the ones who are going to have to face up to it. The head of communications, the, the guys who probably knew nothing about this, this was even going to drop. They're going to have to face up to that. But then now when they go to a meeting and they see people there from Leicester and that, then people will be looking, oh, dear, the, the scums has come in the room. Look at them lot. Yeah. The backstabbers. Yeah, exactly. It's right? Take and that's what I said. The, the credibility. Rebuild this. The thing that Arsenal's always been known for, even when we've been shit on the Class pitch. Class and tradition. Class. Yeah, class. Yeah, it's going to take years. Years. The class and is gone years now. And years. The class is gone. gone. Stan Kroenke has ruined over a century of class and tradition. People like Herbert Chapman will be turning in their grave. People like David Rowcastle will be turning in their grave and looking at it. Even it Wenger, only... you saw how angry Wenger oh, was about it. Oh, I was it. going to get onto Wenger as well. And but you look at only a few weeks ago, and they're doing this whole montage and this big thing about Rocky. And, mm. you know, about remember who you are, what you are and who you represent. And yet behind it all, you're doing that. You, please, listen, listen. When you When you were Years. there speaking about rats, I think you got it wrong. These are the rats. They're the rats. These are the, honestly, and I, I don't know how, I don't know how all of those representatives of those clubs, I don't know how they repair this. I don't know how they- I know can, how they repair how, it. How can they ever be looked no, upon? No, I know. Well, they've got to go, innit? Yeah, they've got to go. 
and it starts this Friday. So everybody in this country, all right, and he's able to make it 6 p.m. at the Emirates on Friday. And this is our opportunity to have our voice heard about Stan Kroenke. Don't sit there and be one of them that says, he ain't really going to hear it. If, you've got, if, you, if you're local, even not local, but you can get here, be one of the numbers. Be one of the people that actually stands up for your club. Even if you don't represent Arsenal, come and join us. Because if you're one of the clubs mm. that are a part of this, we all need to do this together. So if Manchester United want the backing of Arsenal fans, I'll back Manchester United fans to get the Glazers out. If Liverpool fans want backing to get their owners out, I'll back Liverpool fans. I'm not backing Tottenham. But, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, do you know mm. what I mean? This is an opportunity for fans to join together as one, to get the poison out of our clubs. Mm. And that's what it is, poison, all of them. And this is another reason why the FA and the Premier League and everybody are just as culpable, because you allowed these people into our clubs. When you put all these financial fair play rules in place and everything else, remember, Arsenal are one of the only clubs that actually built for financial fair play mm. and tried living within their means and, and doing things correctly. And a lot of that was correctly. to do with Venga. It wasn't to do yeah. with these guys. They, and what they did they were, do? You know what? You, you know what? A lot of people have said this over the years, right? And again, they've been getting away with it for years, right? They had Venga there. Venga was a great manager. And even in his decline... He was the shield. He was still able to squeeze... squeeze out of the squad that they would give him and get them into the top four. Towards the end, and then it just And then apart. they just wanted to be, they only started yeah. taking notice of the decline that we could see for a long time. When it became When empty. we started not going into the top four anymore and it started and to hit their pocket. Yeah. We yeah. see now, we've seen, it's all, the, the veil's been lifted. What did I say to you? You see what everything. What did I say to you? I said to you that Arsene Wenger was like the foundation of the empire. And the moment Arsene Wenger is removed, you will then be able to get at the actual point of that foundation to make it crumble. He's been like the protector, like the force field around it. And the moment he's gone, you'll be able to really get at it. This is a chance for every fan of these clubs that want their owners gone to really make your voice heard. I see the apology from the Liverpool owner. Feeble, absolutely pathetic, pathetic. You're telling me that they would have pulled that, out if there was, weren't a backlash. Of course they wouldn't, they don't that, care. That was only after fans started criticising. Funny enough, a lot of fans started getting on the cases of their other clubs because Arsenal, the one thing they did actually do is in, apologize. Their, in their statement, they said, sorry. Then you looked at a lot of the statements from the other clubs. And it was just, just like, like oh, yeah, um, yeah, so we pulled out. Yeah. And people were like, well, hold on, where's, where's your yeah. apology? Uh, you know, Arsenal have apologised. You lot ain't even apologised. Mm, maybe your dad should have pulled right? out and then we wouldn't have had to <laughs> right. worry about any of this. Do you but know what I mean? Thing, Sorry. The thing, is, <laughs> <laughs> but the, thing, the thing is about it, right? The thing is about it is that they all, it was a oh. calculated move. All of it was. You know, all of it I was. mean, I heard John Henry's thing. He said, that, and even Arsenal's statement, you know, Arsenal's statement was, oh, you know, it was for the best. We were doing this for the best of the club. No, you Shut weren't. Up. Shut up. No, you, you weren't. You were doing it for your pockets. Exactly. I know Years. it's a pandemic. Listen, what, 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 what we got, uh, what we got to realise is a pandemic going on and these clubs have lost a lot of money, right? They've haven't lost, we all? Haven't we all? But they've lost, haven't every business lost a load of money, but they've lost a load of money. Some right? businesses have lost so much that they're irreparable. Yeah. That they, they've lost everything. Yeah. There's people out there that, whose businesses have been affected so badly they felt that they couldn't continue with their life mm. and that people have committed suicide over businesses. That's the real reality. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that puts it into mm. perspective, the, the severity of it. So do we feel sorry for these clubs because you're in a bit of, a bit of difficulties? Seeing Perez talking about Real Madrid and like they're in, um, you know, financial difficulties and debt and... Mm. What? And this thing Should about the, the legacy fans. So the, the fans that have been going week in, week out, paying their money, then we're not, build, building, not what they building want. the reputation of these clubs. They're right? not what they want. Right? You've got the cheat to say, oh, you lot of legacy, we don't really need you lot no more. You bought the club off the back of those fans. What have we said for a very long time, <laughs> Robbie? What have we said? Now, I'm going to tell you something. This is where we're guilty. This is where we are guilty as fans. Long-term fans, fans that have 
emotion and love and everything. Where we're guilty is that firstly, we've allowed it. Secondly, we've bought into it in a sense that when they bring out all their new tops, we go and buy them. Because what they do, they play on your heartstrings. They know that your love for Arsenal outweighs your feelings or thoughts for them. So you'll go, oh, nice, that top looks nice, the retro, well, I'm wearing one. Mm. You've got the new kit, one, the one from mm. this season on. We see them and we're like, before they come out, not buying that, I'm not buying that. Then all I, of a sudden, I, they all buy it. But I, this I, is the thing, I tell you what they want as fans, and I've said this to you so many times, and I've said it in fan cams, we lose a game, and I come out and I voice my opinion and everything, and everyone sees me angry and they're like, oh, DT's well angry today, like fuming, just lost 5-1 to Bayern Munich or whatever it might be. It's because it hurts, it hurts. Proper deep down, it hurts. What they want are the fans that come to the game and we lose 5-1 to Bayern Munich and they walk out the stadium with a smile on their face thinking, oh, well, we just see Lewandowski and blah, blah, blah. Let me go to the armory and go and buy a load of kit. That's what they want. I think, it, I, you know, I've heard this said a lot that fans are guilty as well and I don't I don't like to use that word guilt you know you know almost like we've been complicit in it I don't like to use that word I get what you mean because you know what right we don't buy a shirt because with we want to fuel it mm. we buy that shirt because we just love our club exactly they play and on your so, so it's just like, I love my club so much. That kit looks nice. I want to I wanna show, I'm proud to wear my shirt. Yeah. Represent. So, you know, we, we'll go to grounds week in, week out. The prices will be high. We know those prices are not, you know, we shouldn't go. We should, we should maybe make a step. But then just as we're thinking of it, again, we like, but I want to be there. I want to see my team play, man. We're so connected to the club, to the players, to the tradition. To this. To the badge. The badge. We're connected to that. So that's why we go. So I think it's, you know, it, it's not as simple as just saying, oh, fans are complicit. We go out, we go for, we're involved with Arsenal because of different reasons to what they're involved. Their, Stan Kroenke is involved in Arsenal for business only. Mm. only business that's it yep nothing else the bottom line mm. he has have no other interest in the traditions he probably don't even know what the scores are week in week out I'm convinced of that no a friend of no mine I does. told you that story of a friend of mine one time went and asked him what the score was after a game two days after a game and he and Stan Kroenke didn't know what he was talking about when he saw him in a hotel uh, one time in Miami right so to me we, we do it for different reasons. But I think what, in this case now, and it, funny enough, I was in a conversation with somebody this morning and they were saying, Robbie, the only problem with this thing now is now that Arsenal have pulled out of this, right? He's like, we've lost so much money. You know, where does the club go from here now? I mean, because, you know, we, we, we're not going to be hardly able to buy anyone to improve the squad now in the summer and stuff like that. And it's worrying times. And I said to him, I said, do you know what? If it came down to this, Arsenal actually in the summer going out and so you've got a choice. Arsenal can go out in the summer and buy Mbappe, Haaland, um, all the top players, yeah? We've got the money to do it, right? And build a brilliant team. Or Kroenke leaves. I said to him, I'd take Kroenke leaving. I take Kroenke leaving if we don't buy a player in the summer. Mm. Because to me... Long term. Long term, until he leaves the club. We're never going to be where we want to be. And I, I, I don't know where he goes from here. Mm. He's probably still going to try and hold on for dear life. But now, you know, the, the, the projected amount of money that he's probably looking at making, he's going to see now that he's not going to make that. Mm -hmm. He's going to get blowback from the fans on lots of things now. Scrutiny, this is the other thing that they've done now. The scrutiny now is going to be on everything they do. Yeah. Right? So I just don't see where he goes from here. And I, I, I'd like to see him just do the right thing and just say, you know what? The, the, the adventure over here in the UK with Arsenal Football Club hasn't worked. I think let me just sell it up and let them 
let someone over there take it. But then even then, this is where I think, sl all right, maybe slightly here is where I'd say would be the complicity. Not complicity, but again, how we quickly get the wall pulled over our eyes, right? I saw when we were doing a live on this yesterday, lots of people were saying, well, you know what? Cronky out and let's get Dan Gotte and let's get this guy and that. And I'm saying, hold on a minute. Dan Gotte could be brilliant for Arsenal. Could be. But I'm sorry, whoever comes in next, before you come, I want scrutiny on this person. I want to know that they're coming in for the right reasons. Mm. I want to know what their plan, their project is. They need to be held to account. Because immediately people are just saying, yeah, get rid of one billionaire and let's bring in another billionaire who's going to spend, spend, spend. And also give the shares back to the fans that had them. Exactly. Give you know what I mean? Give the fans back. Even you my know? dad was a part of that. Give back. It might only be the 1% or the 2% or whatever it might be, yeah? The little minutest thing, but this is something that's passed down through generations. Mm. People that were forced. Let's remember this. Nobody turned around and went, yeah, you know what, Stan, here you go. There's yeah, my were, share there. Once he, they, once he got over a certain yeah, percentage, they, they had to give him, forced. they had to sell their At shares. At that point, that's when we should, <coughs> has fans gone, hold on a minute. When we were going to AGM meetings, and Stan used to just sit there, never answer anything. Mm. See and now, he now, again, if 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 he, they didn't own a hundred percent of the club, they, you know, an emergency meeting could be called where they'd be held to account. But they don't even. No. All they got to do that statement will be issued now, and he'll just disappear for six months. Yeah. And leave. That's what I said. And leave those guys at Highbury House to deal with it. Yeah. They're all as cold. You see, Vinay as well. He needs to get in the bin because he's one of the ones at the front of it. He would have known and he'd see everything. And what I think- And all again, these... how's, he gonna, how's he gonna go in front up to- I, I saw them, they it... put out something on their uh, tweet, Twitter, which was the right thing to do about stopping online abuse. But I have to admit, when I saw it come from them, I'm like, yo, bro, you lot, I don't trust you no more. You got no mm. credibility. I don't know how Vinay stays. Do you know what you see? This. You see them, they're the type of people, uh, like Arsenal right now, that by the time we play, um, you know, our next game against Everton, they'll probably all come out onto the pitch in a new tracksuit top. And they'll be like, buy this tonight from arsenal.com. The new range, 27th but this of the is, season. As I said, to me, I want people to start looking deeper than just looking at kits and things, because that's, that's oh, it, too, that's too, so, yeah, that's, yeah, too, I, I mean, that's too simple to look yeah, at. I, I'm just looking it at it. It is deeper. I, I'm just looking at it now and I'm saying, whoever, if the Cronky did leave, which at the moment we don't know, right? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe the pressure of this time might be the one that pushes them over the edge. But these guys, I, I, I mean, I hope so. We hope so. But you don't know. None, we, of, can, none of his owners yet have said they're no. going to step down. Have can we, can we do also just remember something? And this don't in, just include Arsenal, it's <coughs> Arsenal, Liverpool, United. You look, you see Jurgen Klopp and the position he got put in when they went to Leeds mm. um, the other night and everything else. And you look at the words from Pep Guardiola and stuff like that. Um, and even when you look at Chelsea and what they were having to deal with, trying to get into mm. the stadium before their game Pet and stuff like that. And and what you've got to remember to is that none of the, the managers or the players knew anything about this yeah so what i want fans of all these clubs to do whatever your opinion is of your manager because there's divides at man united divides at arsenal all of you go and back the manager and the players for the remainder yeah. of this season Hector billering came out yesterday put out something um saying uh, the quote from um arsene wenger ian wright ex-player does a lot of things around the club mm -hmm. put a hashtag cronky out that's deep good he does a lot of work at the club, you know what I mean? For him to yeah. really break ranks and say, you know. Yep, come and join us on Friday. You know, I, I mean. Seriously, did, get the mm. message. I know, listen, text him, tell him. Say, yeah. right, come and join us on Friday. Mm. Yeah, tell him there's a, another side of a banner that I need him to hold. <laughs> that Cronky banner's coming out, you know. People don't, that, that's my banner. <laughs> Love Arsenal, hate Cronky. I ironed that last night. That's ready for Friday. It's coming back out. So if Wrighty wants to get one end of it and hold it, you're more than welcome. But going forward, as I said, it's not just about bringing in the next billionaire. It's about, it's about where do we go from here as far as football's concerned in this country, right? Um, and there's a balance that has to be struck. 
Because whatever, we, I think, whether we like it or not, yeah, football is big business now. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, it's never going to return back to when we were kids and we went to football. That's, those yeah. days are done, yeah. right? So there's needs, but what needs to happen, there needs to be a balance between big business and profits and big sign-ins and wages and that, and the fans. Mm. The country that seems to have it right is Germany, where they've got packed stadiums, they've got big clubs like Bayern, like Dortmund. 50 right? plus one. And they, yeah, they have that system of 50 plus one. You spoke about transport earlier. Me and you, we've been to German, Germany many times to watch games, got on a train, went to pay our money, and they said, no, it's free. Would you free with your ticket? Those are the type of things they do in Germany, right? If you notice, no German team signed up to this Big 12. None of them. Because the fans were not allow Bayern Munich came out. Bayern Munich came out and said, listen, we will tell you from now, we are not going anywhere near this, right? Not one German team. And there's, you know, there's big clubs, huge clubs in Germany. And I'm not just talking the obvious two of Bayern and, and, and um, Dortmund, Schalke, even though they're, you know, it could get relegated this year. They have been. They're a, they're a huge club. Yeah, they've just been relegated. They've got huge support. Which means Frankfurt, Eintracht Frankfurt. Remember when we went there? Mate, insane. Do you remember how many fans that Cologne came over? But look at their system over there. It's, their league is, you know, uh, all right, I know Bayern win it every year, right? But it's a still fairer because they've earned their way into it. Yeah, that's it I, I, I want to earn my we way need, we, we could do it a system like that we need to look at the whole because the balance needs to be struck yeah. between because we all want to watch it on TV mm -hmm. we're all glad that it's um, I, I like the fact that you know it's a worldwide thing now we all want to be a part of you've got fans all around season. the world you know if what I mean we, if we're going to Barcelona next season or Bayern Munich or any place like that I know in my heart we would have earned that place because we'd have won the Europa League yeah. we'd have won it we'd have, we would have earned our spot but if we were playing Barcelona and Bayern Munich and all that next year, mm. after not winning the Europa League and, and finishing in 10th or 11th. Or a West Ham fan. Who's and they're got sat there. Yeah, they're all <coughs> sat there. West going, Ham fan who's well been done, for years. You've been mocking them and they've been gone relegated, come back, and then they finally get it together one season and get into the top four. And then you were going to turn around to them and say, no, nah, mate. No, nah, sorry. The team that finished 11th. Or, or, or what, what was it they said? Oh, uh, uh, well, hold on, I'll tell you what, yeah, we're going to have a meeting. We might invite you in. Yeah, maybe. That's what I was saying when I was doing all my um, interviews on TV and that go, Staggering. it was a cartel. <laughs> it was like the five, you know, you, you ever seen like when they say the mafia, mm. the, the New York families, mm -hmm. the five families of New York where they just sit down and they say, right, you've got, yo, you got the South side, <laughs> right? <laughs> you got the East side, you can... You can yeah. Manhattan's yours. Do you want to get, you one, of your, do you want to get one of your cigarettes? <laughs> do you want your, your cigars for this? Do you know what I mean? The Bronx is yours. That, that's what they were doing in football. This is what these guys were doing. They were like, yo. Mm. And then you want to come into it now. All right, you know what? We're going to have a sit down. <laughs> and we'll have a sit down. And, and we'll decide, and, whether, and you we'll decide whether you can come in or not. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no. I'm so proud of fans. Yeah. I'm so proud of fans of ev not I'm not even just talking Arsenal now. I'm talking about I'm so proud of football fans. What we have showed is that we together we are powerful at last. Mm. We can make our voices be heard. Yeah. Right? There's some people saying oh it wasn't really football fans. It was the football fans because the pressure that we brought to bear on the politicians, the pressure that we brought to bear on the players that's what done this. Yeah. The politician said, you know what, if we don't fix this, the fans are going to be up in arms. Mm. These are the sort of people that vote for us on that. No, we can't let that happen. No, this is not happening. We, 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 we'll we bring in legislation, legislation to stop this. The player said, you know what, how can we look these fans in the eye if we go and play in this thing? How can we look at other players? Remember, it's the only players of 12 clubs. It was six clubs in the Premier League as well. They got mates in other clubs. So if you're a, if you're playing for Man United, you might be saying, "Boy, how am I gonna how am I gonna speak to Jack Grealish next week? He's playing for Villa. He's not in it. How am I gonna? You know what I mean? The Putting pressure that was brought situation. to bear by the fans. So well done to the fans. Yeah. But also, you brought up a great point earlier. 
these bodies like UEFA, FIFA, right? We're watching you as well. I mean, I'm fearful that all they're going to do now is go and appease these guys. Mm. Do not be surprised if you see the Champions League all of a sudden. It's not the top four that qualifies, the top eight. <laughs> That they say, all right, you know, we're going to do this to make ensure you qualify for it every we year. We still won't be. Don't it. be so. <laughs> we drop into the top. We're ninth. <laughs> the top nine. Sorry, sorry, Arsenal. We've just changed it. <laughs> yeah. Right. We realise you're ninth this year, so we're gonna we're gonna move it to the the, the top nine this year. You know what I mean? <laughs> Our eyes are on these organisations as well, right? Yeah. They talk. They have showed us that they can take action if they really want to. Yeah. Yeah. They can take action if they really want to. Like you said, immediately they came out. Well, well, no, you won't be able to play for England. You won't be able to play. You're banned from the World Cup. You're banned from this. FIFA, all of them. Mm. But yet still, you know, Go and a do guy racially abused, comes up to a guy racially abusing him. Oh, yeah. Um, after mm. much deliberation and investigation, we've decided to ban you for 10 games. Yeah, which is less than somebody that wore a sponsor on their pants. Right, and so. we're watching these organisations now. What are they, what are they going to start doing about racism in football? What are they going to start doing? Start are they going to start taking it seriously like what they did this? They were right to take this serious because this was going to wreck football. But there's something else that's been wrecking the name of football for a long, long time, but they don't really care because money's not involved. Well, now you need to start treating that seriously. Every time they don't, we can reference this of what they can do if they want it. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, it's been a, oh, we got a game on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> you know what though? At least now I, I'm, I care about the game now. Not, mm. not necessarily that game because it's only me, Martin. Yeah. But, I remember I, I took my son to football training the other night and one of the parents there, me and him, was always talking about football. Um, he said to me, he goes, oh, Robbie, what do you reckon is your chances of getting to the final, winning the Europa League? And I said, I don't care. Yeah, because there was no point. I said to him, I go, yeah, well, what's the point? I go, I don't really, no I, go, honestly, I go, honestly, don't care. I go, that's the worst thing about this. That game's going to yeah. come. I was so excited for that game. Now I don't yeah. care. But all of a sudden, yeah. I care again. Exactly. Bring Emery back on now. <laughs> bring it on, Emery. I <laughs> bring, care about that bring game. Bring it back on, man. Bring it back on. So, And I saw, I noted that um, Thomas Tuchel, the, the Chelsea manager, said it had affected his preparations and affected the players for the game. Of course game. it would. Of course it would affect everyone's preparations. So now, hopefully, Mikel Arteta and the players can concentrate on the game, you know, for Friday. What will be, will be. It's a Premier League game, so I'm not really taking too much into it because the big one is, you know, next week, Villarreal. Mm. We're going um, we, to need to prepare for, um, you know, I mean, I mean, the interesting thing is going to be what sort of team he puts out in that game. I think it'll be stronger. I think it'll be more in line as to what we're going to have for the the game on um, the Thursday night. And given the fact that we are playing on a Friday, it makes things a lot easier for us um, because people might not actually know this, but Villarreal don't play till Sunday. And they're playing Barcelona. Mm. So they've been given the worst kind of preparation um, moving forward. So maybe that could be an advantage going into the first leg for us that we got 48 hours extra. Um, and, you know, with all due respect to Everton, it's not Barcelona, is it? So I think that one's fell quite nicely for us. And the players shouldn't need any motivation for that game. We'll obviously discuss that before next week at some point. And uh, mm. yeah. It means something again. Yeah, it does. It, it means, means something again. It you know means what I mean? something. And, and it's going to be nice to not be talking about what's gone on. But mm. um, listen, as I get uh, once again, I want to just say, man, well done to the fans. Yeah, well done. You know, what I mean, when I set up AFTV, it was to, to try to help give um, a voice to fans. Yeah, I've seen so many fan channels um, over this period join together, really join together, and really voice their opinions on it. I've seen so many uh, football trusts come together on it. I've seen people who sometimes argue against each other on Twitter and stuff like that come together. What has this shown us? That if we work together on these issues, we can get results. Sometimes exactly. it's too much. People, oh, I want to be the main guy leading this. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who leads it. Everyone it's about the result that we get at the end of it. Yeah. Now we got to keep that energy going. Exactly. Stan Starts Cron on Friday. Stan Kroenke, 
What's your intentions now with this club? Mm. Starts Friday. Do Don't you, let anything over the next 24, 48 hours, whatever it is, detract you from the end goal. Friday, 6 p.m. at the Emirates. Be there and get your voice heard. What if he comes out and says, this is my plans going forward? Prove but it, it. What, what for you? Robbie, I could come out tomorrow and no, say no, I'll no, never on, argue on Twitter hold on, again. I, hold on, I, I, I want to just ask this and ask this to fans out there. Without us just jumping and just saying the obvious, right? Mm -hmm. What could he do to turn the fans around? I don't think you can. It's irreparable now. You've had long enough at this football club, more than a decade at this football club, to show what your intentions are. You've shown nothing, right? Chelsea and Man City are different because without their owners, they wouldn't even be in this discussion. They wouldn't be part of the European Super League. They'd be in the championship. So they can look at their owners and say, you know what, we can forgive you because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be the club we are today. But could Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool and that be the club they were without these owners? Of course they could. We were before and we will be after. But we were better before. <laughs> yeah, but we were, but this is what I'm saying. <clears throat> we were where we were before Cronky, Glazers, you know, um, and uh, John Henry and all the rest of it. And we will be after they've gone as well. So for me, irreparable. Doesn't matter what Stan says, you've had long enough to prove it. Okay. Like to get your guys' thoughts, uh, leave it in the comments below. Listen, thank you very much for um, listening and watching this podcast available on all the normal formats. Uh, don't forget if you want to get uh, any of the Manscaped stuff, the lawnmower, etc. Um, there's a 20% um, discount. Just use, uh, well, the link is in the description. Click on that for the code. I think it's AFTV and you can get yourself 20% off of uh, the Manscaped stuff. Thanks for Manscaped for that funny script at the start. And we um, look forward to the game um, against Everton. There's going to be protests down at the stadium. It'd be interesting to see what comes from that. Let's just say to everybody, if you are going down there, um, keep it peaceful, yeah. right? Be respectful. The, the worst thing you could do is go down there and not be peaceful with it. And also remember, we are in a pandemic at the moment. So, you know, social distancing, Wear a mask. masks, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, let's, you know, don't, don't, don't let the thing get out of hand so it swings the wrong way. Yeah. You know what I mean? A peaceful protests to just say to the, you know, this owner, enough is enough now. Time you know, to go. Enough is enough. Isn't it? All right. As the great man once said. Yeah, the great man go. once said. The great man once said, it's time to go. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll be back next week.